The next day, when Plajun came, Kalur Ho told her what she intended to do. Planjon did not fail to point out how ill-judged her proposal was. My lady, she said, you cannot bring up a child in our house. Our master loves you now. He will not force himself on you. He has more self-respect and self-control than that. But he will be too jealous to let you bring up a child. He will take it as an insult that you should think so much of a man who is not here and disregard himself when he is here. So I think it would be better for the child to die before it is born rather than after. That will save you pointless labor pains and a futile pregnancy. I am giving you honest advice because I love you. Keller Ho was distressed at what she said. She fell at Plajon's feet and begged her to help her think of some way she could bring up the, her child. But Plajon refused repeatedly and put off answering her for two or three days. When she had inflamed Kaler Ho to more impassioned entreaties, and so acquired more authority over her, first she made her swear not to reveal her stratagem to anyone. Then, knitting her brow and wringing her hands, she said, My lady, big enterprises can only be brought off by big ideas. Out of sympathy for you, I am going to betray my master. Now one of two things must happen. Either your child dies one way or another, or he is born the wealthiest person in Ionia, the heir of its most illustrious family, and he will make you, his mother, happy. Which is it to be? Choose! Who would be foolish enough, said Kaler Ho, to choose death for her child rather than good fortune for herself? I cannot believe what you are suggesting is possible. Tell me more clearly what you mean. Planjan responded with a question. How long do you think you have been pregnant? Two months, said Kaler Ho. Time is on our side, then. You can make it look as if it were Dionysius's child, born at seven months. Kaler Ho cried out in protest. Better for it to die. Planjan pretended to agree with her. You are quite right, my dear, she said, to prefer an abortion. Let's do that. It's less dangerous than trying to deceive the master. Remove all trace of your noble birth. Give up hope of returning home. Adapt yourself to the condition you are in. Really, become a slave. Plangen's advice aroused no suspicion in Kalerho. She was a young lady of quality and knew nothing of slaves' tricks. But the more Plangen urged abortion on her, the more pity Kalerho felt for her unborn child. Give me time to think, she said. The choice is capital, my chastity or my child. And this too, Planjan approved, not deciding hastily, one way or another. There is, There are good reasons for coming down either way. A wife's loyalty on one side, a mother's love on the other. All the same, there isn't time to put off the decision long. You absolutely must choose tomorrow before it becomes known that you are pregnant. They agreed on this and separated. Kaler Ho went up to her room and shut the door. She held Charius's picture to her womb. Here are the three of us, she said, husband, wife, and child. Let us decide what is best for us all. I shall give my view first. I want to die Charius's wife and his alone, to know no other husband. That is dearer to me than my parents, or country, or child. And you, my child, what is your choice for yourself? To die by poison before seeing the light of day, or to be cast out with your mother, and perhaps not even thought worthy of burial? Or to live, and have two fathers, one the first man in Sicily, the other in Ionia. When you grow up, you will easily be recognized by your family, I am sure I shall bring you into the world in the likeness of your father, and you will sail home in triumph in a Milesian warship, and Hermocrates will welcome a grandson already fit for command. Your vote is cast against mine, my child. You will not sanction our death. Let us ask your father too. No, he has spoken. He came to me in person in my dreams and said, I entrust our son to you. I call you to witness, Charius. It is you who are giving me to Dionysus as his bride. 
And so she spent that day and night reasoning to herself like this, and she let herself be persuaded to live, not for herself, but for her child. The next day, when Plan John came, at first she sat there looking sad, with sympathy in her countenance, and neither spoke. After a long time, Plan John asked, What have you decided? What are we going to do? We cannot put off decision. Callerho, weeping in her distress, could not answer immediately, but at last she managed to say, The child is betraying me. It is not what I want. You do what is best, but I am afraid, even if I put up with his lust, Dionysius will treat me contemptuously in my misfortune. He may treat me as a concubine rather than as his wife, and refuse to bring up another man's child, and I shall lose my honor for nothing. Planjon replied, even before she had finished, I have thought about this before you did, she said, because by now I know I love you better than my master. Now, I have confidence in Dionysius's character. He is a good man. All the same, I shall make him swear an oath, master though he is. We must act with complete security, and when he is sworn, you must trust him, my child. I am going to carry out my mission. <laughs>